Miss Adams, before you talk about how you discovered the cure for both HIV and cancer, the viewers are dying to know. What are you wearing? Uh, I'm wearing a lab coat. It's white. First of all, this does not happen only to women, it happens to both men and women. Second of all, when this does happen, it can be significantly more damaging when it happens to men. For example, the guy who landed a uh, rocket on a comet and was uh, bullied by feminists and social justice types for having the wrong kind of shirt on into publicly apologizing and breaking down on camera. This does happen, it happens to men, not just women. However, it seems to be significantly uh, greater I think, actual negative impact on men and not women also tends not to happen when it comes to science. Not that important what they're wearing, particularly when what they're wearing is a lab coat, as is the case in this. You don't really get designer lab coats. They can exist, but no one really cares about them. The people who do care about that scientific thing going on and these people doing science care about the science. They don't care about what that person happens to be wearing. You know who people do care about wearing? Fucking celebrities, people who are important because they're famous, or people who are famous because they do something. There's people who are fucking famous because they're famous, like the Kardashians, or people who are famous because they're actors or whatever. And you know who cares about them. You know who cares about what they're wearing. It's women. Women and gay men. Those are the people who care. And of course, not all gay men. Of course, not all straight women. Not all women in general. Not all of them. But the vast majority fall into those two demographics. Those are the only people who care. The only people. If you are to say that this is somehow a form of gender inequality, that it's sexism by men against women somehow, then you must point out to me how this is the case. Because I'm pretty certain that it's just bollocks. Oh my god, what happened? I was just walking to my car and this guy swerved and hit me and just drove away! Yeah, well I mean, wearing all black at night. You're kinda asking for it, right? Presumably the point of this is to tell us that this is how men will typically treat female victims of rape and sexual abuse. And that presumably if, if you see someone who has been raped or sexually abused somehow and recognize this in the street, you'll run over to them and be all like, Oh my god, what happened? And then when they tell you I got raped, it's like, well, I mean, come on, look at that revealing clothing you're wearing. Weren't you just asking for it? Which, as far as I can tell, no one in the history of the world has ever done. Ever literally. If you're going to talk about, um, for example, walking alone at night and getting hit by cars, yeah, wearing all black is probably not a great idea. There's a reason people have luminous safety jackets and whatnot, because they keep you safe and make sure you don't get hit by cars. And so you are actually more likely to be hit by a car at night wearing all black, oddly enough. But even then, no one acts like that much of a dick around victims like that. Someone gets run over, you don't walk over to them and say, oh, well, that was your own fault, really, wasn't it? And walk off. Not what people do. What people do is call ambulances and shit. Because people aren't fucking scumbags. <laughs> I, I, I refuse to have this sort of negative view of humanity that you do. And I'm not overly optimistic about humans in general. I just know that the vast majority of us aren't that shit. Hillary, I believe in you, I do. I just think a woman dungeon master would be too emotional. Well, women and men do display emotions differently, and typically women are more openly emotional in specific ways that could potentially have a negative impact on a group dynamic. In this instance, uh, a dungeon master or games master does need to remain relatively unemotional in order to uh, ensure that there is a particular gaming environment that makes it okay for everyone to play. Anyone who's played a, a role-playing game will know you can't have an overly emotional Games Master because it will just ruin it for everyone. The Games Master needs to remain neutral. If the Games Master won't have his way and acts out, then it ruins it for everyone. So if your concern is that women may be overly emotional, you might actually be right. Now is it sexist to judge someone based entirely on that? Yes, of course it is. A person who is a woman may in fact have no issue with it whatsoever and be perfectly capable of doing so. So I think what you should do is test them out and then if they are, then say, look, I mean, we have an issue with this. And so it is stupid to be sexist in that way against this particular person because they may not fit the stereotype. But the stereotype exists for a reason. What are you doing? 
You're supposed to stop. I'm just gonna keep pressing until she gives me the green light. Red means stop. No, she'll eventually change her mind and give me the go-ahead. Um, except, of course, that light will eventually go green. Because it's a traffic light, and that's what traffic lights do. You can just keep pushing, and it will eventually let him through, and that'll be fine. You may not have understood quite the point you were trying to make. Just saying. Hey, need to use my charger? Phone's at 100% battery. Oh, uh, no, it's at 77% battery, and with my phone, that's as good as it gets. I'm guessing this is meant to indicate the wage gap. The wage gap's already been thoroughly debunked. Um, but also, if that phone is actually showing uh, that, that amount of percentage and that's all it ever shows, that either your phone doesn't work uh, anymore and doesn't charge higher than 77%, or that is the battery's maximum capacity and your phone is displaying it incorrectly. So either way, there's something wrong with it and it wouldn't be due to your gender. But uh, regardless of that, the woman working in this office next to that bloke is the one checking on her phone while the bloke is sitting there doing his work. That might explain why you're getting paid differently. Just saying. Honey, what's wrong? <laughs> I just got rejected from every single grad program that I applied to. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you would have gotten in if you smiled more. Might well have done. An awful lot of these things are based on personalities and whether or not people actually like you when they meet you. If you're a total dick to everyone, or if you look dour as anything, they're probably going to come off as not liking you as much. Regardless of that, though, whoever this bloke is in this scenario is a total dick. And anyone who has a friend, or partner, relative, whatever, who, when you say, I didn't get into any of the programs I applied for, says, ha, well, you should have smiled more, is a complete twat. And I've got to say, I'm pretty sure no one's really like this. This is yet another example of something completely unrealistic. Of course, the idea is you're, you're meant to show that it's, it's sort of like, well, I, you know, this is how ridiculous they are. The problem is, all you're doing is strawmanning what other people actually say. And so, all you do is look like an idiot. <laughs> Which doesn't really help you at all. Thank you so much for dog sitting Baxter. Just so you know, he does like to maul people. So you're gonna wanna wear this face mask. Why can't you just teach him not to maul? <laughs> heal! <gasps> heal! Heal means heal! Dogs will be dogs. Okay, this is like the fourth time I've tried to take this bit, so I'm gonna try and do it as quickly as possible. Dog. Dog mauls people. Presumably being equated to rapist raping people. Dogs, when they're more people, we don't just lease them onto the into unsuspecting people in the wild and say, by the way, likes to more people. We don't do that, we kill them. We also do this with rapists. We don't release them into the wild and say, by the way, likes to rape people, we put them in prison. Or if you allow vigilante justice or that kind of thing, we do just kill them. Then you have uh, giving the person the face armor, the mask, helmet, whatever the fuck it was, and saying, protect yourself, this is how you protect yourself, this will help you protect yourself. Fair enough, good advice, solid advice. Same with things like rape. You don't want to get raped? Well, okay, here's some things you can do to minimize your chances of getting raped, or if you are attacked, you can try and defend yourself, take self-defense classes, have a weapon, so on and so forth. These are the sort of things you can do. These are good ideas. And yet, I'm assuming, based on the rest of what you've put, that you think this is a bad idea, that trying to teach people to protect themselves is in some way a bad thing, which is a line that an awful lot of feminists seem to take. I'm not entirely certain why. Apart from the whole, you don't want people to have personal accountability, particularly not women. Um, then, after that, you have the most stupid thing. After the heel means heel, which is presumably no means no, you say, dogs will be dogs. Meaning, of course, boys will be boys. The sentence that not a single person in the history of the fucking world has ever used as an actual excuse for an actual heinous thing actually occurring. No one has done this. Not a single fucking person. Particularly not in a court of law. There is nothing about it that isn't in the slightest true. It assumes 
that boys are inherently evil, that men are inherently evil, that they will do heinous, despicable things, and that there's nothing we can do about it. So it is massively derogatory to men, and it assumes that we do not have personal agency and an ability to decide for ourselves what we are going to do and, and are capable of acting in a moral way. Not only this, no one ever fucking uses it. The only people who ever mention boys will be boys are people talking about how it makes no fucking sense and how no one would ever use it. Or no one should ever use it, or no one could ever use it, because it makes no fucking sense. Anyone who fucking believes that boys will be boys is an actual excuse that will actually be used by someone is so dishonest with either themselves or just everyone else that they fail to even understand how ridiculous their own point is. It's the most stupid, retarded argument ever, and no one fucking uses it. Not a single fucking person has ever fucking used it. It's bollocks. I'm sorry, Heather, but the dress code clearly states that all female clothing must not distract boys from their study. So you're going to have to wear this in the meantime. Now go out there and enjoy your prom. Dress codes tend not to say, will distract boys, they say, will distract students. The idea is not to have your children dress provocatively to distract from study, that kind of thing. Also, for their own safety, because they believe that dressing provocatively or in a revealing manner could potentially lead to them being sexually assaulted, raped, attacked, so on and so forth. It's supposed to be for their own protection. I don't particularly agree with dress codes, but if you're going to enforce them, I, I understand why they're enforced and I see nothing wrong with this in particular but the whole uh, now you've got to wear a ridiculous costume that will obviously distract thing is stupid because of course no one does that I don't know of a single example of any school that has ever enforced a dress code where having not met the dress code standards a student has been told no now you have to put on this giant luminous 30 foot sign that flashes on and off that says please don't look at me this is just ridiculous. Anyway, that's that done. <laughs> After I did the gun control thing, I thought I'd, I'd do one of their others, because someone linked me to one of them, and there you go, that's what I did. Oh, um, as far as the white privilege conference thing is concerned, um, I'm not actually doing part four. Because I, I, I'd forgotten to check what part four was about, and um, pretty much the part four video is actually... Uh, that I would have been responding to is actually just debunking what they do at the White Privilege Conference. So I, my commentary would have been pointless. I, th there was no need for me to do it. So I'm just going to, I'll link in the description to the fourth part of that video and you can go watch it uh, at, at your leisure. Because um, they did it better than I could have in that amount of time. So there we are. Fuck off, everyone. And of course, good luck.